Welcome everyone to the October 7th, 2024 meeting of the Human Services Committee. Uh, we have a quorum. Thank you everybody. Um, and the first item of business is approval of the minutes of our last regular meeting of September 16th. Would someone make a motion? Yes, a roll call. A ro do we have to do a roll call? Okay, fine, roll call. Councilmember Ravel? Here. Councilmember Harris? Councilmember Herrick Harris? Here. Councilmember Burns? Councilmember Reed? Here. Okay, well now. Um, I can't hear you guys. Whoops. It's okay. Um, Anyway, moving on to approval of the minutes of our last regular meeting. Do I have a motion? So moved. And a second. Second. Any comments or corrections? Then all in favor, please Recording say aye. Recording in progress. Mm -hmm. Aye. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. All right, we have minutes approved and now we're ready for public comment. Um, so we have at least one speaker, Michael. Uh, Michael Palmer. Would you come up, come, come up to the microphone? Yeah. And this is uh, talking about the proposed uh, can, change. Can you make sure you're speaking into the microphone? Is it on? I'm talking about the proposed change to the noise ordinance. Mm -hmm. um, my name is Michael Palmer, and I live in the Optima Views condo building on Maple Avenue. I support this proposal because currently there are two restaurants across the street from my building that play music onto the adjacent sidewalks all day with outdoor loudspeakers mounted on their buildings. These sidewalks are important paths uh, for anyone who lives in my building. I recently learned that it is illegal in New York City for businesses to play sound onto the sidewalk from their buildings. So I tried reporting these restaurants for violating existing noise laws here in Evanston. For some reason, the existing noise ordinance are not being interpreted as prohibiting what these restaurants are doing to the surrounding sidewalks, except after 10 p.m. Evanston currently has a regulation in the permit requirements for sidewalk cafes, which prohibits a restaurant from playing amplified music into their sidewalk cafe. Obviously, the underlying problem is that the sound is audible on the sidewalk itself and bothers pedestrians passing by. That is a problem even, even if a business doesn't have a sidewalk cafe at all. Uh, this proposal would generalize that prohibition to loudspeakers mounted on the exterior of, any, exterior of any building. New York City has a legislative declaration which explains the rationale behind their law against this. They say that, that, that this noise deprives people of the peaceful enjoyment of public space and it creates traffic hazards by distracting pedestrians and vehicle operators. Evanston is striving to be a walkable city and it should prohibit this noise for these same reasons. I also think that there should be an exem exemption uh, for sound from an event with a loudspeaker permit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else present who would like to make give us public comment? And anybody online? All right, um, then thank you everybody. We'll move on to our agenda. I will move ordinance HS2, uh, variation request for ordinance 15023, protection of trees on public on private property. Second. Okay. So does staff want to talk to us about that first? Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Hey, Chair Ravel, Council Members. Um, I'm Angela Lavernier, the Tree Preservation Coordinator. So um, we got this variation request. Um, the new ordinance went to effect June 1st. Um, and any tree that is diseased, imminently dying, or hazardous, a permit can be approved. So in this variation request, that tree does not fit into one of those categories, so they're still requesting it to be removed. 
Um, and you'll see in the memo that um, it's not a one for one replacement. There's a tree replacement calculation. So it comes out to about nine and a half trees, new trees to be planted, or the fee in lieu is $1,900. Mm -hmm. So if there's any questions, I could. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, Council Member Reed. Oh, well, I'll hold for a second if someone else wanted to kick us off. Beg your pardon? I said I'll hold for a second if someone oh, else. Sure. Had... Okay. Uh, well, I think if there's no one else, then I guess I'll go. I'll go. Um, I actually just really, it, it's not to this particular case. It's about the ordinance overall. I just, it, through our conversation earlier, I have a bit of concern that I guess I didn't catch um, as we passed this ordinance. But to me, it seems somewhat problematic that we're, and I understand that, that we're charging a permit fee uh, for folks who are cutting down trees that are diseased or dead or and potentially cause imminent danger to the family. You have to pay an $80 fee to get rid of a life safety or, or you know, a life and property safety concern. Um, certainly understand if you're just cutting down a healthy tree, you know, the fine makes sense there. Um, so I just want to raise that concern about the way this ordinance is constructed. Um, I don't think we should be charging permit fees for folks who are, even if it were just the imminent safety concern, maybe the tree's mm -hmm. dead or there are some other issues with it, but it's not a life safety issue or a property safety issue. Mm -hmm. So that's my overall concern. Uh, for this uh, particular instance, so they're, um, they're cutting down a tree of what size? Um, I Let me see the DBH is 15 dbh so that's about that big um what i'm sorry uh dbh is diameter at like four feet okay okay um what does dbh stand for diameter at breast height okay um okay um and then they're replacing this with the proposal is that they're replacing this one tree with nine and a half trees that's the calculation which they won't be able to fit in their backyard you know most yards in Evanston are too small, but um, that's why they also have the fee and lieu calculation. Okay. So if they wanted to plant one tree, they could, you know, it's about $200 per tree. Is and have they decided what they're going to do yet? Mm -mm. Nope, they okay. just applied for the variance. Um, and I'm sorry, why are they cutting down the tree? Um, they don't, um, they believe it's leaning over their garage because it's, um, it's being inhibited, it's growing towards the sunlight, basically. There's a larger tree next to it, so it's growing at an angle. So they're fearful in the future, it may be a reason to cut it down if it, you know, becomes yeah, hazardous. A, yeah, and there are photos of it in our packet mm -hmm. from the homeowner. Um, you are a certified mm -hmm. arborist. Uh, do you see a reason for them to one do we have to grant this we can deny this and then they have to keep the tree correct correct so yep. do you see a do you agree with their assessment that it is going to be it certainly will be an issue for their garage and it's, ac it's actually for the neighbor's garage yes for the, or for the neighbor's yep. garage it's the, it's the neighbor's garage um in general i mean trees are living things so yeah. we kind of assess them in time yeah but in general leaning trees when they grow as saplings they you know they produce response wood on the opposite lean side of the tree which you know generally Shores makes it, it stronger yeah um i mean i can't say that this tree will do this as it grows but that generally is what happens so it would need to be assessed you know throughout the years of its life Um, so what would your recommendation be here just from a, that of an um, arborist? I don't really have a recommendation. I mean, I, the protocol is the city arborist goes out and assesses it. And if it fits in that category, then we approve the permit. And if it doesn't, 
then it comes to the Human Services Committee mm -hmm. and, and they make the decision. I guess from the standpoint of, uh, you know, uh, from the standpoint of the, the, the tree's health, the tree's life, what trees provide to us, our values that are, um, you know, codified essentially by this ordinance. Mm -hmm. Do you think that now is the time to cut this tree down or do you think that it would be best to reassess in a few years? Um, as it is now, it's, it's healthy. Um, they always have the option. I should, I should say we, we don't do a full tree risk assessment. That's mm -hmm. a higher classification, but they also have the option to get a tree risk assessment done. Mm -hmm. And if it comes back hazardous, when they do a higher evaluation, we would approve the permit. Um, I don't think this tree will come back hazardous, but they do have that option. Okay. Uh, with that in mind, um, so, so, so council member Reed, so the um, home, homeowner provided a detailed um, explanation for why they would like to cut down the tree. And, and they're, they're saying, you know, it's, you know, from the photo, it's definitely leaning over the neighbor's garage because there's a large maple tree also in the backyard, which is taking over most of the sunlight. And so they're, they're saying, you know, in, in another four or five years, when it really is necessary to cut down the tree, then it's going to be twice as expensive because the tree's going to be even bigger. It'll, it'll be more problematic to, to try to take the tree down. And, and I think they're probably worried about the, the potential impact on their neighbor's garage. I, I'm, I'm relatively, this is our first time when we're having yeah. to do all this. And, um, uh, so I, I am sympathetic to the homeowner. Uh, Council Member Harris. Oh, I'm sorry. Oops, I'm sorry. I, yeah. I, I interrupted no, Council no Member Reed. Um, yeah, but uh, so what I was going to say is with, with this, and I am sympathetic as well, and, um, you know, glad that these folks are on top of it, but just given what our goals with the tree ordinance are, um, I don't know if now is the time to grant this, and maybe we, uh, you know, if they are really concerned, they can go out and have that higher level um, assessment done and then bring that back to us. I'd maybe support tabling this for a few months or however long it takes to have that done. And, um, you know, I'm curious about the cost of that um, on the homeowner. But, um, right, the point of us having a staff position that uh, and this ordinance is to protect the trees. And um, if there isn't necessarily a good reason other than you know, uh, uh, speculation that potentially this tree could in five or 10 years become an issue. I, I don't know if that's good enough reason to grant a variance set. And I think, especially since this is our first, uh, variance, I think we should really take precedent, um, in, in mind here. And I think we'd be setting a bad precedent that, um, if we allow this tree to come down without, uh, getting a deeper level assessment done. Oh, Council Member Herakaris. Sure. So, um, you know, reading this through, I, I think, um, I definitely appreciate the thorough um, background of what's happening. You know, it's not just affecting their yard. I think there's concern from their neighbors. Um, as someone who's had to, you know, remove a tree that's really close to their house before, like it, it's, as it gets bigger, it only gets more expensive. And I, you know, years ago, I think spent over a thousand dollars to remove a tree that was, in, you know, um, pushing on our porch. Um, and so while I know we, we, I think this, this ordinance, it's never going to catch every case scenario, right? We, we, as, as much as we work to, you know, write something that's, you know, one size fits all. Um, I think this is a, a situation where we should make a, an allowance here. Um, I know that they, they outlined some of the steps they've done to mitigate the loss of the tree. Um, I don't have my, my tree math sorted out. How many trees have they, because I know, because I think a really important part of the, the, the ordinance is to actually replace what you're taking out what's 
where are they at in tree math as far as like the nine trees and what they've um, planted? They did mention that they had planted in previous years some trees. I, when I was out there, I did not inspect them. So I don't know how long they've been in the ground. So was, from that regard, the nine and a half trees would be new, plant, newly planted trees. Okay. And essentially it would be, you know, nine trees. The nine and a half is for the fee and lieu calculation. Okay. And, and do you know how roughly how, how expensive it is to get this extra evaluation? That you know, I don't know what the going rate is. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they would have to reach out and get some estimates done. Mm -hmm. and, and that what would that extra evaluation tell us? Um, it basically does a full tree risk assessment. So not, not only of the overall tree, but of all parts of the tree. Um, it's done by a tree risk assessment uh, qualification that's through the International Society of Arboriculture. Wow. So, and they get, they get a full report mm -hmm. um, detailed. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, Council Member Reed? Yes. Uh, so I understand the concern about the uh, cost of taking the tree down later. Um, you shared that you had an expense over a thousand dollars or close to a thousand dollars um and you said it already and, and i is it 1500 or 1800 the current um fee for it's, the it's 1900 1900 mm -hmm. okay so they'd have to pay 1900 dollars now to plus the cost of removing this tree um to the city so i imagine in five or so years if the tree in fact is becomes a danger to their property or their neighbor's property, then the tree would be deemed eligible under the ordinance, correct? correct. And so then they wouldn't have to pay that opt or the whatever you want to call this fee, the replacement fee. Um, I think the math maths on that and that it would be cheaper potentially just to right. to wait and figure out whether this tree is actually a danger or not. And if it is a danger, then you chop it down. Yeah, you pay a bit more to to remove it, but you avoid the $1,900 in fees um, to, to replace the tree. And potentially, you know, maybe the tree doesn't become a danger. And we have now a, I don't know how old this tree is, but they're a more mature tree that's sucking up more water and doing all the good things that we want trees to do. So I would argue that we just ask them to be patient and to keep an eye on it. Or maybe if they are really concerned, they go out and get this risk assessment uh, done, and then they come back to us. I, I just don't think, especially for our first one, I get we want to be sympathetic, and, and I'm sympathetic to it too, but I think it's just really important that we kick this off right and uh, do our due diligence before we allow folks to cut down the trees, or we undermine the purpose of the ordinance, and mm -hmm. folks will start coming to us with all kinds of hypotheticals um, mm -hmm. that aren't backed up either by a certified arborist or by these, um, you know, higher, uh, these risk assessments. So I would encourage a no vote or a tabling until a later date to allow them to bring us more information. So would you like to make a motion for one of those sure. options? Uh, well, um, yeah, if unfortunately, I guess it's unfortunate that no one uh, is here from the home, right? Mm -hmm. Joseph's not, okay. Um, so I will move. How long do these uh, high? Uh, how long do these assessments take? Typically, um, I think it would be more. The time would be them getting the estimates, sure. and and if they want to move forward, yeah, if they even with want that to do option, that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so I would, you know, give them a quarter. Um, so I'd table this to our meeting in uh, either January or December. That's not really a time to cut down a tree necessarily. Maybe it is. Um, Maybe there are better times of the year to cut down trees. Any time of the year. Any time of the okay. year. Okay. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I'll table this to our meeting, our first meeting in January. I think that'll give them plenty of time to figure this out, and what they want to do with this. Um. And hopefully, they uh, are get a chance to see them this meeting, or maybe they'll read Bob's story and they'll get some ideas about um, how they could potentially save some money on this and address this uh, at a more appropriate time. Okay. So thank you. Uh, is there a second to that? I'll second it. So I think we need a roll call on this. 
or a voice for it. Up to you. No roll call. Hmm? Roll call. Yeah, roll call. Councilmember Ravel? Aye. Councilmember Reed? Aye. Councilmember Heracaris? Aye. Okay, so um, this motion is this item is tabled till our January meeting and um, and you'll communicate with the homeowner. And could you just come back a minute and because Council Member Reed uh, raised another important point. I, I guess I had thought that if the tree was diseased and dangerous and all those things that we didn't charge a there is a $80 permit fee. There is. Yeah, okay. For, okay. Yep. Right. Well, that's maybe we something want to, to visit that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. All right. Moving on. Uh, HS3. Would someone like to make a motion about the honorary street name sign designation? I will move HS3 resolution 50 R24 approval of an honorary street sign designation. Designation. Councilman Green, second? I don't know. I'll second it. Um, so, this is a, a motion for uh, an honorary street name designating uh, um, a portion of Hartree Avenue between Emerson and Lyon Street. It, this would be Donald Michelin Senior Way, and this uh, was approved by the Parks and Rec Board and forwarded to us. And um, anybody have any comments? I know my my son at Haven thought thought Doc, you know Coach Michelin was great, so <laughs> there's a vote for him. Um, all right, um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Okay, so this will go on to City Council for action. Oh, okay. HS3, Councilmember Heracaros, you want to make this motion? Sure. Um, HS4, I'll move HS4, Ordinance 90024, specifically allowing building permit fee waiver for income eligible seniors. And I'll second that. You want to speak to that, Councilmember? Yeah, sure. Um, I just want to thank staff for. Um, helping me get this ordinance to this point. Um, you know, in talking to constituents, um, you know, there's a lot of um, concern from folks on fix, fixed incomes um, about just rising costs in general. Um, I know um, as someone who, um, you know, does has um, in-laws and parents who are um, aging, you know, the aging in place is a uh, is something that many families have to. Um, it's a situation they have to um, deal with, you know, um, accommodating, you know, for. You know, a lot of homes aren't aren't built for uh, folks with mobility issues, and I get the feeling like you know any help we can give for um, seniors, especially seniors who are on fixed incomes, would help. So something as simple as you know a fee waiver, I think would go a long ways. Um, you know, it was really hard to figure out exactly what the budget impact would be, but I also get the, the impression that a lot of folks are not making those changes because budgets are tight. So that's something we'll have to keep an eye on, and um, you know, as we um, get uh, more information from our permit office, but I think it's something that I think we should definitely extend to folks, so. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and City of Chicago has a very similar program, so yeah. that's where I yeah. got the idea. Um, well, I'm I'm very sympathetic to the um, the rationale for having this, but it seemed from the memo that there are so many uh, an unanswered questions. I'm I'm feeling that it's premature to approve this because we don't know, you know what. No, what how, how what different kinds of permits are are included in the permit fee schedule and who staff which staff member staff department is going to be um, determining whether an applicant is eligible or not um, and and this and apparently community development department is reviewing 
all of our permit fees and um, it just it seemed to me that we would have a better idea of what the impact would be and just how it, how it would be implemented if we waited till waited a while. Uh, Council Member Reed. Thank you. Or, did, oh, go for it. Um, well, actually, I'd, I'd love to hear your response to that. So, if you want to take some of my time to, no, you, you okay. Um, I uh, missed thirty seconds of the conversation here, but I, I think I might share similar concerns to Councilmember Ravel in that. Um, well, one, I appreciate. I think this did change from its original form, which was just a waiver for all seniors, and now I think it's income eligible mm -hmm. seniors. So that um, moved it in the right direction for me. So actually with that, um, I, I do think I'm, I would just love to see the full list, um, but I don't know if the list necessarily matters at this point uh, since it's income, uh, more income driven. I think I'm happy to move this forward at this moment, uh, actually. So, so uh, yeah, Councilmember Harakari. Yeah, and and I think we both kind of looked at the memo in a different light. I think mm -hmm. um, the fact that we are evaluating our current permit structure, I think for me, gives it more of an opportunity to be baked into the process while we're reevaluating. So. Um, there's kind of a chicken or the egg situation. Like, is it better to pass it now and then work it into the, um, the permit process or do we, and I'd also be open to potentially it. I, I get the feeling that we are in general have support for the, what we're trying, what I'm trying to do. Um, I'm also willing to table it to get more information from staff so that it's more fully baked. Mm -hmm. So, since we're using well, and, a and one su <laughs> one one suggestion in the memo was that it could be part of our when we talk about the um, strategic uh, strategic housing plan that it could be part of that and it would, but yeah. So it we're so we're working it toward is, we're working towards we're, getting more information. Yeah, and here. I think you know we want to get it right, so I, I'm fine mm -hmm. tabling it and, mm -hmm. and working with okay. staff some more. Uh, Council Member Reed. Yeah, I, um, I don't think it should be a part of our strategic housing plan. I think that would distract us from the, you know, this is, would be, you know, it's a good policy, and I think uh, will certainly benefit um, some of our seniors who are trying to age in place and who are on fixed incomes. But making this a part of our strategic housing plan, I think this would be such a small part of that that it would either get lost in the big stuff they were trying to do or it would become one of those things where we're spending far too much time talking about this which in the context of a strategic housing plan is not the thing that we want to uh, focus really any time or energy on um, I, I'm actually happy to move this forward to council um, but um, if the sponsor wants to table it I certainly will uh, support that but I, I think this is with some of the changes that have been made from its first concept uh, is is ready to go to council. So, Councilmember Herakar, so when I have a last word, I, I guess my 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 end goal is to get it to council eventually. Um, there's only three of us here, so I, you know, I maybe I'll make a motion to table it till the next meeting, um, answer some questions, and then we'll hopefully have more eyes going forward, so. Second. So, so was there a second there? Yes, second. Okay. Um, can we have a roll call on the motion to table this to our next meeting? Oh, uh, just, I'm sorry. One question I have sure. uh, that I think would be relevant for that is to have an understanding of what, and I don't think it was in the memo, but uh, what the budgetary impact may be uh, as we're Moving I forward, don't I don't think we have any idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it's that's an unknown variable, and our seniors and our fixed income seniors doing a lot of work on their houses that would require permits. But um, 
if there's any way to estimate that, even just a rough estimate based on, you know, the homeowning population in Evanston and what percentage of them are seniors and what percentage are uh, 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 on a low income or fixed income or whatever the eligibility requirements would be here. Um, if we could just kind of rough throw those uh, numbers on and assume that there's an equal number of those folks requesting permits, uh, that might give us at least a rough idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Director Ogbo. Good day, everyone. I go board director, Health and Human Services Department. Uh, Council Member Reed spoke my mind. Um, the issue that we faced is to understand what the cost implications uh, would be and what the budgetary impact would be if this is approved. Uh, based on what I've gathered, uh, when individuals are applying for building permits, age or income is not information that is obtained. Mm -hmm. So it would take us a while to figure out what the budgetary impact would, would be. Um, I don't know if a month would be adequate for us to be able to, to gather this information. Uh, maybe it's something that we can table until maybe the first quarter of, the, of next year mm -hmm. so that we're able to gather as much information as possible regarding this matter. Because uh, I think we'll probably be in the same position that we're in now in a month's time. Yeah. Because it's not only that we don't know just to, you know how many permits there are out there that might be part of this package and what the financial impact of that would be, but then what's the financial impact of us of dedicating of figuring out how the staff is going to handle the eligibility determination? So there there are a lot of unknowns. Um, so Councilmember Herakars, would you want to have a, uh, you, make a friendly amendment to your motion to table till January? Does that seem? Yeah. I, okay. All right. And Councilmember Reed, you're okay with a friendly amendment? Yeah. Yeah. My okay. second stands. Okay. I, I um, just have some, if I may, uh, very quickly. Um, well, I, I, I'll wait until the numbers come back, but I do think it's beneficial to get all of this stuff in as we're creating the budget, uh, just so we have a greater understanding. Do roughly, what do we bring in in permit fees annually now? Um, not a number that we have offhand. All right. I, I think it was, thank you. I think it was like two, I wanna say it's like a million. Okay. I think I did, we did it way months ago. My brain isn't working, but I think Based on, I think it's what 17 percent of the population over the age of 65. I think it, I think the potential, if it tracks that one to one, like right, right, it'd right. be like I think 300,000. Okay. So yeah, don't, it, so that's don't what quote me on that. If if, thought, if, but, if I'm the reason that we're tabling this until January because I said I want these numbers, like let's not do that unless it's important for other folks, but. You know, I, you know, like Councilmember Hedekade said, if it's, if we know that 17% of our population is over the age of, are we going 55 or 65? 65. 65. And we know that on average, I think it's somewhere around 14% of the population is, um, you know, low income. And what, what metric are we using again for the, to determine income eligibility? Is it, um, are we using like, to, 60% of AMI, 80% or are we using 30%? 80%. So not necessarily low income, but you know. Um, so maybe 25% of that 17%, I, I don't know. But I don't know if it would, I don't know if we need to get too deep into it um, as far as, you know, taking a bunch of time to get numbers that are all gonna be a guess. I think I'm sad, I'm happy with, um, you know, just a, a that rougher estimate of making some assumptions and then just assuming it's a one-to-one -one match, which we know it's likely not, but just understanding is it, I, I would like to believe it's not gonna be 300, if it's a million dollars, I'd like to believe it's not gonna be as much as 300,000, but if it's, the numbers come out, you know, 150,000, maybe even 300,000, I just think that that's something, you know, that that's something we should be aware of in the budget year, so, 
I'd, I'd be happy seeing this move forward sooner than later. Um, but thank you. So where are we with our motion? Uh, I think yes, we're still Council, uh, to uh, January. Again. I think there's exactly. a table to January. Uh, another element that we will have to consider is, are we waiving or building permits, or is it the degree of work that would be done in these buildings? Are we talking about small scale repairs, or are we talking about removing a deck, removing a roof, this type of work project? So that has to be clearly defined as to what we are waiving as well. And point of information, um, we're only talk, we're only talking about owner occupied units, correct? And is that specifically spelled out in the ordinance? These are for homeowners. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, if I'm a, if I'm a, a landlord and I'm 68 and I'm somehow low income as this landlord, but it's clear in the ordinance that I would not be eligible for the waiver for my rental property. It's the waivers for a homeowner who's lived in the on the property for at least ten years, who's owned the property for at least ten years. But what if I'm I, I have a four flat or a three flat, um, well, and I'm doing work I, on I one of the rental units? I think units. it sounds more like the the person who's actually living in the living in a residential unit that they own. Is how I is well. How that's I what I mean it. by I I own it and I'm renting out the other two or three units, but I'm doing work on well, the that, units that I'm renting that out. That is a question that is not answered. I, I do think that this should be owner occupied units only. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. To be clear. Well, well, I think we're making a case for getting a lot more information sure. before we're ready sure. to send it to council. So. Councilmember so Harakars, would you like to restate your motion? <laughs> yes, we'll table table it until January. Okay. Uh, so do we have, and we have a second. So can we have second. a roll call? This is a motion to table this item till January so we can get a lot more information about what's included and what the p potential financial impact might be. Councilmember Harris. Aye. Councilmember Reed. Aye. Councilmember Ravel. Aye. Thank you. So, pushing off a lot of work to January. All right. Um, all right. Would someone make a motion for HS five, which is amending the noise ordinance? I will move HS five ordinance eighty seven zero twenty four, amending the noise ordinance to prohibit amplified music on the public way. Mm -hmm. Second. Okay, I'll, I'll second it since it's my my issue. <laughs> um, so I, I, we heard, as we heard, whoops, I, I'm going to jump in first. Um, so as we heard from a resident, uh, it, it's it's just it seems inconsistent that we have an ordinance that clearly says, out sidewalk cafes shall have no amplified sound, and yet we don't have anything to handle a case where there's a business that is just playing music and there are no tables, no chairs, no sidewalk cafe. So it's a, it's the same impact on the public way as would be sound and music from a sidewalk cafe. And yet there are no, no regulations for this other case. So this, this um, proposed ordinance would, would make it clear that even if it's, even if there's no sidewalk cafe, that there can't be a similar amplification of sound um, onto the public way um, by any business end. And I, and I do want to make a, a, a couple of small edits to the, the language that's in the, in the proposal um, to get rid of the, to eliminate, excuse me, um, the phrases the and cause and causes a noise disturbance, because that adds an element of subjectivity that, that makes it difficult for enforcement. Um, so Council Member Herakaris, I think I saw your light first. Yeah, um, I just want some clarification from legal that this only applies to businesses um, because my concern is that this can be weaponized and you know, I'm, I, I will fess up to having amplified music when I garden sometimes and 
Um, you know, so I just want that clarification on the, the reading of the ordinance. You wanna? I think this would apply to anybody. It says no person. Good evening, Chair Ravel and members of the Human Services Committee. Catherine Penrose, Lone Assistant City Attorney. Um, I would have to um, go through and read. Are you talking about this, the proposed ordinance? Right. Okay. Yes. Um, if I could just have a moment. It appears to apply to any person, not, uh, it doesn't appear to be limited to businesses. So, um, I, if mm -hmm. you'd um, be open for an amendment, if, if we would cha could change that to no business may use or operate, operate or permit to be operating a mechanical device or loudspeaker. Um, I just have a concern that this is gonna be something that people call their, on their neighbors and we mm -hmm. end up sending care staff to. Yeah, so if, if a resident yeah. had a. Like a Bluetooth speaker. An, a radio yeah, or on like, their back deck or something. Yeah, because mm -hmm. it, it otherwise, uh, like, mm -hmm. I feel it opens up a can of worms. So. Uh, Council Member Reed? Yeah, I actually share the same concern um, as Council Member Uh You know, we all have amplified devices that we walk around with. And um, while I personally, and you know, I personally rarely don't have my headphones, but you know, if someone is walking, I'm imagining a young person, particularly a young person of color, walking down the street with a Bluetooth you know, speaker. Th these are very definitely amplifiers that are attached to, attached to property. They're not, they're not gonna, it doesn't apply to somebody walking down the street. It says um, fixed or movable well, position exterior to any building. Well, yeah, fixed or movable position exterior to any building leads me to believe any speaker, and maybe we can have Miss Sloan, but that language means a Bluetooth speaker that someone's walking around because it's movable and it's exterior to a building. So it's not- Attached to a building? It, no, it says fixed or removal position exterior to any, I don't know. It's not, it doesn't say attached. It just says it's essentially outside of a building. Is that, is my reading wrong, uh, Ms. Sloan? I would certainly read it that way. Um, it could definitely use some clarifying language because fixed or movable sort of cancel each other out um, in my view. So it could use a little bit of clarifying language in that, that section. Mm -hmm. So remove the movable word, for example. Um, Councilmember Heracaris. Um, again, like I know many folks also have stereo systems in their, like their patio and deck area. Right. So I think um, for me to be comfortable uh, moving this forward, it, it would have to be no business. Um, I know I encourage everyone, like if you have a, your neighbors are playing music, let's talk to them. Like that's, mm -hmm. but I don't, I'll be uncomfortable with it um, mm -hmm. going forward without the, mm -hmm. the delineation between person and business. Right. So. Um, so would you like to have the language cleaned up and come back to us before it goes to council then? Point of order. I actually, sure. I think that we should, uh, if we're going to move this to, and I support that, uh, having this focus just on businesses, although, um, Mike, I think the gentleman mentioned New York or someone, uh, yeah, the gentleman mentioned New York. I was in New York about a year ago and it was actually very pleasant walking down some of the streets and you hear the music making the streets lively. So I'm actually partial to sometimes allowing the music at reasonable levels. But um, I think if we are going to move this forward and we're taking out the people element of it and just focusing on businesses, I think this would be best addressed by the Economic Development Committee and moving this um, there and allowing, um, uh, uh, you know, this should be something that's not, that, that this should be a part of our, um, you know, business regulations rather than in this section of the code if we're going to focus just on businesses. So I, I'm not going to make the motion yet because this is your mm -hmm. um Thing, but I, I would recommend that we move it to economic development and switch the section of code 
in which this will appear? Well, uh, our code is so hard to find things. I'm not sure where where exactly would be a better place, but um, uh, but I certainly understand that we want to make it clear. We're really talking about um, uh, buildings in our in our business districts, and we are talking about fixed rather than movable devices, and um, and we're talking about eliminating the subjective language of causing a noise disturbance so that it's just plainly the plainly audible language is sufficient to to the to the issue so the question is if it if we refer it we ask staff to make those changes and it comes to council next or do you want to have it come back here first right what what are you comfortable with uh, I'll I'll sorry to jump in but I, I'll also add um Or I'll hold for now. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I think and I totally get why we're um, hearing this. So I'm totally comfortable moving it forward with the, you know, suggested edits to, you know, accommodate myself and council member Reed. Um, but I would be comfortable with it going to, mm -hmm. to council. Point of order, when it says emergencies, or point of information, actually. Um, when it says emergencies are exempt from this subsection, what kind of emergencies are we contemplating that folks would? Yeah, I don't know. Is, that... is, there, is, is there a reason why we have that last sentence on the? I apologize. I didn't, was not involved in drafting of the ordinance, so I'm oh, not aware. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. And, okay. and then also, I'm thinking about, um, you know, exterior to any building. What is the exterior to? A, I mean, I generally know what the exterior to a building is, but I'm thinking about the Northwestern Stadium, um, where you have this open. There's no roof, and so is within the bowl, but fixed to something that is essentially outside. Is that exterior? I well, we're, that's not in the business district. It's not a business, so. It well, be. just this language doesn't specify business district. So if we're saying that we're going to change this to say. I think we're, yeah, we're talking commercial business. Or, or, okay. We're, we're, we're talking about making it clear that we're not talking about residences. Right. So, well, th all that language matters. So if we're saying that we're going to change it to say that it, we're not talking about residences, then mm -hmm. maybe the Northwestern Stadium counts. If we're saying commercial, then are we saying that the commercial events that Northwestern holds? And that's just one example um, that pops to mind because it's an open stadium. I, I do think it might be worth having this come back to us mm -hmm. um, just to, to clarify all of this before we send it forward to council. Okay. I'm comfortable with that, that we can. So I move to, to table this to our Ms. Sloan next meeting, to our next meeting. Mm -hmm. um, I'll second. Okay. Um, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Um, aye. All right. Table to our next meeting. And moving right along. Um, oh, yes. Horse-drawn carriages. Can someone make a motion, please. I move HS6 Ordinance 17024, amending the city code to restrict the use of horse-drawn carriages in the city. Second. Okay. Is there any discussion? Yeah, Council Member Reed. Yeah. Um, so I know Council Member Harris referred this, and she's not here tonight. Um, and I think that was our issue last time. I just wanted to get, there's obviously some info in our memo, but I wanted to get more information on um, the background here of, of how this came to be. Well, apparently there was a horse-drawn carriage that, uh, was it with a wedding or something? Do you remember? Yeah, I, I'm not entirely sure, but there was one, and that's what prompted this mm -hmm. ordinance. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, and... Uh, Is 
so I, I do know Chicago, I believe, recently moved to completely. Is it accurate? Completely ban horse-drawn carriages. Certainly, I know that the right. businesses that were downtown, I think, are no longer there. Um, right. Yeah, I, I think the horse-drawn carriage that that are that's envisioned in this particular situation is, you know, for a special event kind of thing. It's not a commercial. Mm -hmm come ride in a horse-drawn carriage around downtown Evanston. Yeah, yeah. And the, the proposed ordinance just really adds, we already cover horses, and this just adds horse-drawn carriage to our current ordinance, current, current code. So, on page. All right, yeah, I'm, I guess I'm fine with this. It doesn't completely ban um, the use of horses or horse-drawn carriages. Um, it just, yeah, it's try, It's saying if you want to fee. do this, you need, you, it's one of these situations where, once again, you need a permit and you need to, you know, be sure you're taking good care of the horse. Yeah, I'm curious where the language about the taking good care of the horse is. I don't know either. Because um, I, yeah. I recently spoke to a gentleman from the Humane Society of mm -hmm. America, but Illinois chapter, um, and they were excited about this from the animal welfare standpoint, and this also went to the animal welfare board. Um, I would be interested in seeing um, the animal welfare language here. Um, I also, you know, I think if folks, more folks were riding horses rather than driving cars, we'd be quite a bit closer to our climate goals, but might have a smelly city, but I, I'm fine with this. I, I would just like to see the language strengthened um, around the animal welfare portion of it. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at I'm looking at it. I don't really see anything that talks about being sure you take good care of the horse, but and also if someone owns a horse, uh, again. Um, I don't think there's anyone in the city that owns a horse and uses it as their mode of transportation, but. Well, given that, given that we have rules about chickens, I bet we have rules about, <laughs> we don't provide for people to have horses in their backyard. Sure, sure. Um, okay, I'm, I'm happy with this. Okay. Um, then uh, all in favor, we'll, we'll vote on this and send it on to city council. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. No. Okay. Um, now we have two items for discussion. I think maybe could we just, just because we don't take forever to talk about our police complaints, could we do um, we'll move HS, item HS8, HS8 first? A review yeah. of the Evanston Police Complaints and Commit or Common uh, or yeah. Comments second. Report. Oh, welcome. Thank you, uh, Chair, Committee members. Thank you for having me. Aaron Wernick, Evanston Police Department, Office of Professional Standards, just asking that to accept and place on file our report for this past month. Mm -hmm. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Okay. Council members, any questions? Yeah, were there any incidents uh, that um, you, you think are notable in, in any regard? How would you define notable? Uh, <laughs> something that <laughs> rises to the level of uh, community concern. I think I might make this a standard question that I ask. Uh, um, I mean, I personally don't think that anything that is in here was of a community concern. Obviously, we keep track of all our statistics and we keep track of all our trends and that is reported, um, but there is nothing in here that is of concern to me at this point okay. that's out of the ordinary right i would right. say okay nothing, no. thank this you very is, much. everything this month was within the normal scope of what we're seeing thank you yeah i mean some some difficult interactions that yes yes but um but i think handled very well so yeah i appreciate that okay do we do we do any votes or we just say thank you um, just a vote to accept it and so, place it on oh, file. Okay, okay. Can motion, okay, all in favor of uh, accepting and placing on file, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Take care. Okay. 
And now we're ready to talk again about the general assistance program. I'll move item HS. Well, I don't know if no, uh, Councilmember Burns was he, really Ryan. driving this, and he's not here tonight. Mm. And I mean, I'm I'm fine sticking around, but um, <laughs> do we want to hold this and allow yes. Councilmember Burns to? Okay, yes. yeah. So I'll, I'll move to I'll move to table this to our next meeting. Okay, Councilmember Heracars. What Councilmember Reed said. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Uh, all in favor of tabling this till our next meeting, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Thank you. Well, then I think um, we are adjourned. <laughs>